Good morning, everyone, and thank you for inviting us today. I am Lucas Economakis, and I'm a structural engineer and really passionate about AI and new technologies. I'm Joey Maxis, and I'm a humanitarian architect devoted to social impact work. So, this is me and Lucas back in the school days. As you can see, we go way back. We actually know each other since we were 10 years old. At that age, probably we didn't know what we were going to do in our lives. We probably still don't. But what we always like to discover was new frontiers. And we like to do that together. At least in our imagination, because I think that that boat definitely looks anchored to the marina. Well, Jay, I think what we did know for sure is that it would be great to work together for a common purpose. You see, Jay was more about uh, the why, and I was more about the how. So we complement each other really nicely. After school, we took slightly different paths in life, studying and working abroad. And then we both returned to Greece. One of the main reasons that we, we returned to our country is, of course, the great weather. Well, not only that. Actually, we wanted to contribute positively to the many challenges that our country had and still has, actually. So, when I returned in 2015, Greece was deep in the economic crisis and unemployment was soaring. It was clear to us that youth unemployment was definitely something that needed to be addressed. In 2016, I founded Odyssey, a non-profit organization focused on the integration of vulnerable groups through free education and dignified employment. So who do we serve? We serve the most underprivileged youth that are looking to find employment and that not, might not have the ability to pay for a tuition fee, be that an unemployed Greek or a refugee. What we look most in our people is, that, is the zeal, the zeal to radically transform their lives and their circumstances. So in essence, these people are our own underdogs. When Lucas joined me in 2018, some of the challenges had already become evident to us in the humanitarian field. Two of them clearly stood out. The first one that really shocked us was that the people in need vastly outnumbered the resources we had available to serve them. For example, in Odyssey, we are not more than 10 full-time people, and we are serving more than 1,000 people every year that knock on our doors. And that number is growing exponentially. Combine that with the speed a typical NGO raises funds and the problem only intensifies. The second key challenge that we faced was how to successfully document and measure the impact of our work. We wanted to communicate our work with our donors and the public. And we wanted to be really sure about the quality of our work and what, it, what the actual impact it had in our society. For example, how effective was a course for helping our people in finding employment? As engineers, we always measure and quantify things in our profession. So we wanted to apply the same thinking and a similar approach in the humanitarian field. We wanted to make decisions based on indicators and be really transparent about our work. So we looked around, we searched for such tools that could help us in this front. However, by looking at the main, the leading NGOs in Greece and internationally, we realized that only a few such organizations have such a data-driven approach. So we had to create these tools ourselves. Today, we would like to explore how we address these key challenges and offer a fresh perspective about harnessing the power of technology in our work. So I wouldn't say that there was a very definitive Eureka moment, but through the years in the humanitarian field, we actually felt uh, and we quickly understood that we needed data and we needed lots of it. So we completely restructured the way we worked and based it around four key milestones. First, we collected large data lakes and learned everything relevant about our people and their needs, as well as the labor market needs. We placed procedures and, and data insights in the core of our decision making. This resulted into the creation of valuable insights. And these insights lay the foundation for the new innovative tools. Finally, with these tools, we had a chance of scalability and the ability to serve more and more people. So here is 
let's say, a uh, representation of Odyssey. The way I like to see about it is like to think about it as a ship that has many different compartments and rooms. In the center of the ship, where the engine lies, we have placed our AI tools. So our AI tools gather data from the skills of our people, from the labor market needs, and they match it to specific job opportunities and specific courses for our people. Our people work as a pa the passengers of the ship, and the Odyssey crew works with our people throughout this journey until they're further integrated in the Greek society. Using this approach, we saw a tremendous improvement in our work. We doubled the, our efficiency, we were able to quadruple the quality of our services, and we were able to improve our monitoring evaluation by a factor of 10. So now let's deep dive and look in more detail how we changed our approach to be more data driven. The idea was to bring the best qualities from the technology and the business sector in the impact field. And we were really surprised to see this missing. Here you, you can see a screenshot from our platform that shows in real time data for more than 1,000 people that we have skill assessed. We, keep, we document their demographics, their soft skills, hard skills, their educational background, as well as their work experience and needs. We have similar data and dashboards for our academy and employability department. We monitor all participants' performance, and also it's really important for us to take their feedback. But we don't stop there. Even after they graduate, for one year after they graduate actually, we monitor their progress through employment because we want to really understand how well they have integrated. These new insights that Lucas described also help us design our new academy center. Specifically, we realize that people having these difficulties, that people having these difficulties actually needed an especially truly inspiring environment in order to flourish again. Education does not need to happen only in the classrooms, but can be an interactive experience that is both fun and playful. Next slide. So based on these insights, we opted for a more hands-on approach to education, blending both theory with practice and creating job simulated environments. These, these courses help them acquire skills, not only relevant today, but also for the future, thus protecting them from the risk of automation. So bringing our architectural skills to practice, uh, we were able to create 14 such spaces and these spaces now can serve more than 1,500 people every year. Great. Now let's see something different. Can you imagine this? You all know Tetris, right? The game. So what if by playing a simple game such, Tetris, such as Tetris, for just a few minutes, a computer can understand several important skills you have. How revolutionary could this be for our work when guiding people through employment? This is what we are working on, on a research program funded by the EU called Nadine. By playing a simple game, and a machine learning algorithm can quickly assess the skills, hard and soft skills, and can produce such a table with your competencies. Such an approach can open a lot of new possibilities for our beneficiaries, especially those that want to reskill themselves through educational courses. And we have such great examples. For example, Louis. Louis is a migrant from Sierra Leone. Back in his country, he had studied law. And uh, he was here for a long time trying to find a job and he was really unsuccessful. So, his confidence, his, his bank account were taking a hit. And we needed to find Louis a job really quickly, really fast. So we ran through our assessment and we discover a hidden talent that Louis has. Although he has a theoretical background, he's really good in technical work. And we see that his score in creativity is really high. In parallel, we realize that there is a gap, there is a need in uh, the Greek labor market for metal workers. Actually, Greece brings metal workers from Bulgaria. 
So we encouraged Louis to, make, uh, to take a metal working training. And after a successful few months of reskilling, he found a really quality, quality job in the field. Another example is Fatima from Syria. Fatima is a talented chef in Arabic cuisine. However, she has been employed, unemployed for quite a while now, although she has registered with us about, I think, eight months ago. Uh, so time had passed, and one day we received a phone call uh, from one of, of our collaborative restaurants um, looking exactly for someone with a similar profile. So we searched through a database and we found Fatima's profile again, and it was a perfect match. She very quickly landed after an interview, really her dream job. So we don't want to limit through uh, until this type of work. We want to bring it to the next level. We want to bring this approach to the humanitarian field and make it like as a common standard. So here today, we'd like to share with you a new tool that we are developing and something that we are really excited about. It's called the Job Recommender and its technology is based on machine learning that will further help us enhance our scalability and impact. So what does a job recommender do? It automatically matches the skills of a, of a person directly with a job opportunity in the labor market and can also work via vice versa. So it can also match a specific people, person that a company is looking directly to, to that company. Through this tool, we will be able to provide target job opportunities to thousands of people and thus accelerate impact, reducing our operational costs. We are really happy to see technology and innovation pushing the boundaries of the humanitarian field worldwide. And actually, we have seen great examples emerging on that field, and I'd like to share a few with you. For example, in a refugee camp in Jordan, the blockchain technology is being used to support the efficient distribution of goods and services among the refugees. Another great example is uh, Omdina. Omdina is an online platform that brings together data scientists, AI experts, and uh, impact organizations to tackle challenges such as wildfire prevention or uh, human rights abuse using AI algorithms and data analysis. Another great example is Hala Systems. Hala Systems is a startup that is it's using uh, machine learning, predictive machine learning, to protect civilians from bomb attacks in conflict zones. In essence, we are in the beginning of our journey. However, we feel that by sharing some of our efforts today, we have offered a glimpse of the tremendous potential for improvement in the humanitarian field. We would love to see youth putting their talents to good use in this sector. Humanitarian work does not need to be obsolete, but can rather be a driving force, harnessing the power of innovation towards social good.